Hey guys, it's Katie. Um, I haven't been posting a lot of videos. Um, not that I've ever really posted a lot, just because I've been learning a lot. Um, so lately I've been working with polymer clay. Um, and these are just a couple of pendants I quickly made today. Now they're not finished. Um, I made them out of Primo and there are many tutorials on how to make pendants. The thing I wanted to show was the difference buffing and sanding can make. Now I usually always <clears throat> still apply var um, uh, some kind of varnish or resin to my cabochons. Um, but say you don't have that or you're afraid of resin. All I use, so let me first show you the difference of one that's not sanded and or ones that's sanded but not buffed. Okay, so this one's sanded. And I use wet dry sandpaper. And if I didn't have a buffer um, on this one, what I did was I started at 400 with the wet dry sandpaper and went up to 2500. But I do have sandpaper that goes all the way to 10,000. And that gets a pretty good sheen, but not a super shine if you go all the way to 10. The one thing I wanted to show you was okay, so this is sanded and they're all sanded the same. I have a bunch of them. But look at the difference when you buff. Now, the only way I can achieve a good buff is, you know, by using my Dremel. And a lot of people are really afraid of Dremels. Dremels are not really very scary. Um, I bought a refurbished one off of Amazon. This is, it's reconditioned by Dremel for like a hundred bucks. Um, it's a Dremel 4000 and it has many speeds down here. You just plug it in. So it's not a wireless. So I have enough power and you know, you can change the speed here. I generally work between five and 15. So it's not even like here, I'll put it at five and turn it on. There's an on on button. And then I usually go up to 15. That's usually as high as I go. Okay. Um, the way this Dremel 4000 works is it's got a lock button right here and it's got this little, um, oh, I can't think of the name of it right now. Ooh, I'm a dental hygienist, so I should know the name of it, but it's got a little thing that holds the burr in. Okay. The tips that are on it are called burrs. Um, so this is a polishing wheel that I got. So you would hold the button down and then you twist it counterclockwise to unlock it. Okay. And they usually have a different shank and every machine will have different shank designs or, or thicknesses of them. So you'll have to figure out what yours has if you get one. So, um, you know, you can get different grits of sandpaper. These are super handy. I don't use this on the front. I use a wet dry by hand, but if I could, all I could find was up to a thousand grit in these and I want it finer than that, but that would be super cool if I could just polish it all by using my Dremel. Um, I also have different shapes and size burrs that I use to grind things down with. Um, you, I bought all of these off of Amazon. Um, what I use to buff are these orange wheels that I got off Amazon. They're, they're polishing wheels. Um, I've seen people make homemade ones, but it came in a pack for not very expensive and I can put the link to them. But these are what I use. So you would just place it in the hole Hold the lock button down and turn clockwise. And now it's tight in there. It's locked in there. And then just turn it on, put it on whatever speed you want, and it spins. And all you have to do is buff. And you do want to buff in the same direction that you sanded it in. So if you do circles, do circles. If you go up and down, go up and down, however you do it. This is what, this orange one, I'll put the link, is what I use to achieve this super high shine. Isn't that great? So I just wanted to show, you know, if you don't have resin, what you can achieve just by sanding and buffing. And obviously, the smoother you make your clay before you bake it, the easier this will be. But you can sand most imperfections out. I mean, you can see when I turn it in the light, you can see a little divot there. I am planning on resining these, so that to me doesn't bother me, but I want it as smooth and as shiny as possible. You know, and say that was your back. Like, what if that was your back? Like on this one here, that's my back. I'm not gonna put a backing on it because this is quite translucent, but the back's not bad there. 
right? I mean, I wouldn't think. I mean, so I usually only put resin on one side. One, because it's hard not to get it on the other side. But two, you don't need to when you can buff it that well. I mean, I could put Renaissance wax on this and make it even shinier. But I just wanted to show the difference between sanding and then buffing versus not sanding. Or versus just sanding. So this one's wet dry sanded up to 2500 and buffed with the orange wheel. No wax, no nothing else. This one is just sanded. Isn't that crazy? So I just wanted to show you that. Again, I'll put the link to the buffing wheels down in my um, description box below. Um, and also do not be afraid of the Dremels. Now, I do like the handheld ones and I do like, I don't have a flex cord shaft it's called. Um, this is, you know, it's, it's a little heavy but it's fairly light. And so this works fairly well for me. And I even use it like this wheel, if you put it on a higher speed like 15 and you get these little raggedy edges on some of your clays, you can even trim your edges very gently without having to sand those little raggedy edges off. You can actually trim those raggedy edges off. I don't think I have anything nearby that has raggedy edges. Let me get all this stuff out of there because it's focusing on that. Let's see. This is something I, I'm working on, but it's not finished. So like there, right? So you can see right there, there's a raggedy edge. Watch what I do. So I'm just going to turn this on. I'm going to put it up to about 15. I know this is going to be loud, but watch. The raggedy edge is going to drive it across. See how it's going away? It's hard to show you and do it in the position I am. You can see the dust coming off of it, but the dust is coming off of it. So, yeah, again, you just, if you want to trim out like little bumps and stuff, you just put it at a higher speed and just go. I mean, it's really not that hard. Even then, look at it, it's even made it a little shinier with this wheel. But, yeah, you can even just trim these, these edges up a little nicer. And just get rid of them so they're not all rough and stuff. But this thing works great. So that's what I wanted to show you.